This video is designed to help you start an organic farming business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's an organic farming business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful organic farming business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Taking your idea and turning it into a reality requires some careful planning. You need to learn as much as you can about organic farming before you go any further. First, it's a good idea to talk to farmers who already practice organic farming and learn all you can about the pros and cons. If you already have some experience, you may want to try offering your services for a while to learn more about the differences. Gaining the knowledge of another farmer who's already been through the process of starting up or converting to organic farming can be hugely advantageous. Go on some hands-on training courses set up especially for organic farming and meet with like-minded people. Learn all you can by reading as much as possible in books and on the internet. Research. Once you're confident that you have the basics down, it will be time to start thinking about what type of organic farming you want to get into. There are lots of possibilities, here are just a few examples, livestock, cattle, sheep, pigs, poultry, cereals, wheat, oats, barley, sorghum, soybeans, corn, rice, rye, millet, vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, potatoes, carrots, swedes, turnips, sweet potatoes, zucchini, tomatoes, bell peppers, chili peppers, onions, lettuce, cucumbers, fruits, apples, pears, oranges, lemons, grapefruits, grapes, strawberries, blueberries, melons, peaches, nectarines, apricots, nuts, almonds, walnuts, pecans, hazelnuts, pistachios, peanuts, chestnuts, macadamia nuts, herbs, thyme, oregano, rosemary, marjoram, lavender, cilantro, mint, basil, chives, parsley, chamomile, specialty crops, saffron, ginseng, ginger, turmeric, goji berries, bamboo, truffles. Choosing a location. The location you choose for your organic farm plays one of the most crucial roles in its success or failure. You must take into account purpose. What crops or animals will you be raising? Accessibility to your market. Too far and you'll lose money in transportation costs. Water quality. Do you have easy access to pure, clean water? If you don't have the advantage of choosing your land, then ensure you pick the best product for the soil type and resources you have available. It might be best to pick a crop that grows wild in the nearby landscape. Or choose an animal to raise that can tolerate the climatic conditions without having to provide too much by way of additional feed or shelter. Be prepared to think outside of the box. Could you perhaps do something different, such as container farming, vertical gardening, or intercropping to make it more viable? Understanding your market. What market are you catering for? Is there a significant demand for this in your area? If not, it might be better to try something that is in greater need. Find out what sells well in your location, and check that the market isn't already saturated. Growing or raising your product is one thing, marketing and selling it is something else, but equally as important. Get networking and find a suitable mentor. Even if you've done all the courses you can, talk to other farmers, and even worked on an organic farm. You still need to establish a solid network to keep in touch with, and preferably a good mentor or two. These kinds of relationships come into their own, when things don't go according to plan, or you need a bit of friendly, knowledgeable advice fast. Network with other sellers too. They can help you get into farmers markets, and other retail locations you might otherwise miss. Preparation. Once you have your farm, or are ready to convert to organic practices, you'll need to get organic certification from the USDA. This requires you to follow a strict set of rules and meet the specified criteria. The first task is to sort out the soil. Without good soil, you won't get good produce. This is true for both planted crops and animals, as most animals will eat the grass or other things you grow for them. To improve the soil, you'll need to get it tested, then add what components are necessary to make it well balanced and more fertile. This could mean putting on an annual dressing of green manure, compost, poultry litter, or cow dung. You should also plan crop rotation carefully and practice mixed cropping. Planting legumes will help add nitrogen and growing cover crops protects the soil, increases organic matter, and helps reduce weeds. Making your own compost is also very beneficial, and can help save money. The next part of the video is not specific to the organic farming business. 
Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the organic farming business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful organic farming business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis For a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money, in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? 3. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? Seven. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan? based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them. Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs, try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. 
Here is a list of items, you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses and multiply it by three. This is the amount of cash you will need to cover operating expenses for three months. Deposit this amount in a savings account before opening your business. Use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs to the total expenses for three months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for three months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month because of seasonal patterns and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running an organic farming business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea and do as much as you can yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free organic farming business plan gift. Go to the description below this video to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.